revealed this week, Caddy K, uh, from 2010 to 2012, an increase of 35 percent within the military. The president very angry about it. This is men and women who are being assaulted. And this gets to a core issue, which is who you report assaults to in the military and the role of a military commander to even do away with the verdicts or decide whether the cases are brought. And almost as shocking as the number of cases is the fact that 92% of reported assaults in the military never actually make it to a court process. So there are two issues. One is that it's incredibly scary for young women and young men in an organization where following orders is what you are meant to do mm -hmm. and where it is very hierarchical to go to their seniors when those seniors might in some cases have been the perpetrators and say I've been the victim of assault. Right. It's particularly and hard in the military and the prosecutorial process is flawed because it's left up to military commanders. Now Senator Gillibrand this week is going to propose legislation that that gets taken away from military commanders as it is in the UK where you have an independent but West, Right, but, but Secretary mm -hmm. Hagel is saying he's not prepared to do that, that there is still an issue of order and discipline. This is not a democracy. That's a, a, Senator Graham pointing that out, that you can't change this process that dramatically. You've been in the military. Yeah. Um, Can I, you get real reporting if it goes up the, the, the chain of command? I don't think I, I don't think it's that difficult to change to change reporting. In fact, when you look at these numbers, I think it's something that has to be looked at mm -hmm. because this isn't just an issue about fairness and equity. It's also an issue about recruiting and retention. Uh, you know, in 2016, we're going to have the military that's going to be fully integrated, where we're going to have women who will be allowed to serve in all different combat arms operations. This is something, and, and we can't act like this is something that hasn't been noticed by females and males who are serving in the military. I mean, one of the things I'm most proud of the military for and proud of my service is the fact that the military has actually always been ahead of society society on so many issues. We integrated before society integrated. We had equal pay for men and women before society. If society still doesn't have the same measure. Mm -hmm. We also, I, everything, and also you look at even, even basic issues of allowance of, of jobs and criteria. This is one issue where we're still far behind on. And I think that if the military cannot figure out a process in order to sustain that, and when we're talking about 93% of cases that actually don't get prosecuted, then I think we, we have an obligation to be able to look at other means of being able to examine, to investigate, and then to convict people who are guilty of crimes, which is what they are. David, I think the key is what these two have just said. I think it has to be taken out of the command decision making. It's clear that there is too much excuse and this has got to stop and there has to be zero tolerance and that has to be supported by a separate judicial process whether it's a full court martial process or anything else aside apart from the military command structure and uh, you, you, you know what's happening too to women all over the world the rapes in India what, what's happening in this country with the concern over the abuse of women against their will, it's got to stop and the military ought to set the tone for a new day because it cannot continue like this. Congressman, as I said, you've you're, you're, you're yeah. been in the military. How do you feel about it? This is a tragic situation. Um, I mean, look, you have young women that are basically volunteering in some cases to give their lives for a country and they put themselves in some cases in a hostile environment. So uh, I think the military has got to be very open about saying any level officer, any level supervisor, if you hear of something, you have to report it up the chain. I can tell you as an officer, if I'd have heard of, if I would have heard of anybody in my command uh, being mistreated, not only will I have reported up the chain, I would have dealt with it right there immediately. And people need to be encouraged to do that because, uh, look, you have to have the freedom to feel right where you are. I want to end on a hopeful note if I can. There was a wonderful image this week, far apart from some of these you know, horrible stories uh, that we've been talking about.